Good afternoon, students. So I'm a bit early today, and uh, supposedly this is a 1.30 um, lecture, but I decided to start it a little earlier because I noticed that Sarah Martin is in the classroom. So I figured, well, why let Sarah Martin wait, right? So uh, welcome to this week's lecture, Sarah. So how's your week going, Sarah? Are you OK? I can't hear your audio. Oh, hold on. Let me make sure that my speaker is audio is is good. Let's see. Yep, my speaker is good. Last week my speaker was off, and then when the student tried to talk, I couldn't hear a thing. So I thought it was because the student was um, didn't have her mute on, was muted. Anyway, so this week I'm going to talk about peer review. So um, this week you only have two things to do. You just have your week three forum where you do your food game and in which you post your initial post of having somebody guess what your food is um, by Wednesday and then by, uh, you have until Sunday to post to two students. So when you have forums you have two deadlines. Wednesday is the first deadline to post your first post and then Sunday is your second deadline in order to respond to two students. So when you have forums, you have two deadlines. So that, that confuses students. And then number two is your week three quiz. And so I hope you're all, you're all finding your week three quiz prep. I put your week three quiz prep in the week two instructor session, also on the home page. And if you scroll down on the home page, you will find a week three quiz prep uh, videos and PowerPoints and lecture notes. And if you scroll all the way down on the home page, you'll also find the uh, fall 2021, all my lectures recorded from the entire uh, week, fall, fall, fall session, all 12 weeks. So if you're interested uh, in looking ahead uh, to my lectures, you can do that. So, without further ado, I'm going to start. Hey, uh, good afternoon, J Jamilaya or Jamilaya. I know I keep saying that wrong. Um, Jesse, I think. So, let me share the screen and then I'm going to go over what is a peer review. Now, for this, um, for this forum, you're, just, you're doing the food game, but for week five, week seven, week nine, and week 11, those forums are going to be all peer review forums. And so we're going to have forums every other week. So week one, week three, week five, week seven, week nine. Every other week we'll have a peer review forum after uh, week three. So uh, do you know what a peer review is? No. Sarah, do you know what a peer review is? So I figure. Uh -huh. Like where we just grade someone's work? Sort of, yeah. In other words, you're going to post your rough draft to the forum, and then you're going to look over other people's papers to help improve their grade by pointing out, giving suggestions on how other people can improve their paper, pretty much. So, so you're not grading the paper, you're just giving suggestions or evaluating someone's paper, okay? And then um, that's going to be, so I'm going to have a, an entire um, PowerPoint on that because people seem to be lost on what is a peer review. Good afternoon, Candace. How are you doing? I'm so, doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So this week's uh, lecture is going to be about peer review. Uh, good afternoon, Lisa. And so this week's lecture is going to be about peer review. And that's going to be for our week five, week seven, week nine, and week 11. Uh, forums. So the rest of the forums for the rest of this class will be about peer review. So I'm not going to delay any more. Here is the uh, presentation. So here, let me get to the slideshow. Uh, <coughs> and from beginning, isn't that a neat effect? So what is peer review? So here I was playing with the effects. As you could tell, I was having a lot of fun doing that. Peer review. So what is the purpose of peer review, the benefits of peer review? So this, this, this presentation is going to go over the purpose of peer review, benefits of peer review, constructive criticism, how to receive feedback, 
how to give feedback, peer review forum, and peer review in the world. And by the way, when you guys make a presentation of your own, this page, which I call the agenda page, is like your thesis statement, where you point out to people what you are going to be talking about in your presentation when you make a PowerPoint. It's just, this is just like a thesis statement. Anyway, um, and then once again, I was playing around with, with the uh, effects. So, the purpose of peer review. The purpose of peer review. Many students have trouble with the peer review forum. In this class, the peer review forums are week 5, 7, 9, and 11. And in this presentation, I will define what exactly is peer review. So many students worry that they are not strong enough writers to give a constructive feedback on a peer review, or they think they're going to hurt other students' feelings. But actually, you don't have to be a good writer, you don't have to be a grammarian to just give simple suggestions to other students on how they can improve their paper. So a peer review is when you review another student paper to give it feedback so that your classmates can get a better grade. A peer review is also when others review your paper and give you feedback so that you can get a better grade. A peer, in, in the real world, a peer review is when one worker reviews another worker's job performance. So there are different kinds of feedback in a peer review. So in your peer review, you can, get, you can compliment someone's work and show appreciation. You can tell uh, Teresa, you did a great job. Your paper is really good because. And this, makes the, this gives confidence to the writer when you tell someone what they did very well on their uh, paper. Uh, you did great writing because. And so it's not just about you know, nitpicking other people's mistakes or making other people feel bad, but you can also show appreciation of what you found good. So, so one kind of feedback is appreciation feedback. Second kind of feedback, mentoring feedback. That is, you ask for help. You ask other students, oh, I'm having trouble with my thesis statement. Can you guys give me a better way to say my thesis statement? I'm having trouble with finding sources for my topic. Can somebody out there help me? So mentoring is when a student asks for help, and then you respond to that student question. So when you write your rough draft, you can also add questions at the end of your rough draft asking others to help you with your paper. You could even say, my body paragraphs don't look very good. So can anybody help me out with a better sounding uh, paragraph? That sort of thing. So you can, that's called mentoring feedback. And then you, have, uh, then you have something called coaching feedback. Coaching feedback is when you simply look at someone's paper and then you come up with suggestions on how that person can improve their paper. In other words, that person didn't ask any questions, didn't ask for help. It's just simply somebody's rough draft and you give actionable suggestions like, uh, Donald, you really need a better thesis statement. Or, or, or Angela, I have no idea what you're talking about. What exactly is your main idea? And you really need a better uh, thesis statement. Or Professor H says that you need to put your thesis statement as the last sentence of the first paragraph. So I just went over one aspect, thesis statement. There are so many different aspects of a paper. So in a way, you are being like a teacher in that you are going over the same rubric uh, that I use for my grading. But the only difference is you're not grading the paper. I'm the one that grades the paper. All you do in peer review is just give suggestions on how other people can improve their paper. And so the last kind of um, feedback is called evaluation feedback. Evaluation feedback is the kind of feedback I give you when I grade your paper. So, and I'm the only one that can, so you're not actually grading other people's papers. And so that's, this is the kind of feedback you're not going to be giving. You're just going to be giving the first three appreciation feedback in which you compliment someone's work, mentoring feedback in which you help somebody find sources if they ask for help, coaching feedback is when you give actionable suggestions to help somebody improve their grade, and then evaluation feedback, that's the kind of feedback teachers give you to improve your grade. So if, if, if I said, Denisha, you need to have better uh, parallel structure in your thesis statement, and then Denisha comes back and says, what's, what's parallel structure? 
and can you make a video about parallel structure, uh, Professor H? And then I create a video about uh, parallel structure, and then Denisha is very, very grateful, okay? So after, so while you have your peer review forum, you should um, post early so that people have time to see your, uh, don't post all the way on Sunday because then no one has time to give you feedback on your paper. And so you always post early, like way before Wednesday, and then you have until Sunday to look at other people's papers, just like you do with the food game where you guess other people's uh, food posts of what the food is. So the earlier you post, the more feedback you get. And then when you do your week four rough draft, I expect to see all the corrections in your paper. I don't expect to see the same mistakes that you did from the previous draft, you know. So uh, if, you, if you give me a paper that's exactly the same, with the same mistakes, without any corrections, you lose points. Um, and I remember the papers because I have to read it over and over again. I read the same paper in week two, then I read it in week four, and so on and so forth, and in, and in the forums. So by the time I get to week six, so this essay that we're working on, the first half of this class will be doing that. So those are the three kinds of feedback that you're going to be giving in this class. You're going to be giving appreciation feedback, coaching feedback, mentoring feedback. Is everybody with me so far? Yeah? Okay. So what are the benefits of peer review? Peer review builds teamwork. Peer review allows students to clarify as they explain to classmates and formulate questions about other students' work. It also um, emphasizes and enhances your understanding of the writing process and thesis statement and parallel structure and paragraph structure. And then um, why do a peer review? As you look over each pa everyone's paper, you're helping other people improve their grades. And then you're building other people's confidence. You're building your own confidence too because then you know that you know something about writing. And then you get so that whenever you read a book or someone else's um, article, you get to correct their grammar in your head. So making the writing process more collaborative gives students more opportunities to learn from one another and to think carefully about writing. And that's teamwork. And then students learn from each other. Strong, weaker writers learn from the stronger writers. So in all my classes, I have students who are already published writers uh, who are experts at APA, for instance. And then you have other students who've never seen APA before. And so you've got this huge gap. So here you have the stronger students helping the weaker students. Um, but although the majority of my students are not really good at APA. Are, are you guys good at APA? Uh, Anil, are you good at APA? Uh, what exactly is APA? I, I'm not. Okay, who I will is say that? Who is good at APA? Anybody on this call that's really good at APA? That's the American Psychological Association. APA is the formatting, notation formatting you're going to be learning in for this class. And so that's a different um, that's a different lecture. So so the stronger uh, writers learn from the Everybody learns from each other. And so when stronger writers write papers, weaker writers learn from the stronger writers. Peer review groups learn from each other. And peer review allows students to clarify their own ideas and, and discover weaknesses and strengths. Peer review provides professional experience for students in having their re writing reviewed. Because when you are a professional, like once you become a professional, whether you become a nurse or a teacher, you will write your own articles for professional journals. And then it's going to, you, these articles will then be reviewed by other professionals in order to tell you whether or not your article is good enough to get into the journal. Okay, that's, that's traditionally how you get your stuff self-published. Although these days, if you can't get published, you can either self-publish or blog yourself. But that's what peer review is. It gives you experience in being reviewed, and then you learn how to give feedback and how to take feedback. It's an art. And so you show appreciation for other students' work. Compliment fellow students on their papers to make their day. Tell students what they did right about their paper. Instill confidence in fellow student writing. Everyone likes to be shown appreciation. 
And so, Pierre, what are the benefits of a peer review? Uh, Jesse, what are the, is that, is that your other name, Jesse? Nobody's responding to that, so it's not, not the correct name. Um, Sarah, what are the benefits of doing a peer review? Um, it'll help you be able to write your paper better. Okay, and uh, what will you learn about uh, writing? Uh, let me let me get to see if I can get her name right. Jamila. Yes, ma'am. You said that right. And um, as far as writing, we'll get feedback to make sure that we got our point across. Okay. And what what are the certain different kinds of feedback that you're going to be giving, Anil? What are the three kinds of feedback you're going to be giving? Uh, appreciation, mentoring, and complimenting. Coaching feedback, yes. So if someone's been taking notes, that's good. So do you have to be a professional writer or be excellent at grammar in order to do a peer review, Lisa? No. No, you can stink at grammar. I've even had ESL students um, do, a, uh, do peer review. In other words, people whose first language is not English. They, they, they're, they're, they're very nervous. Actually, everybody is nervous doing this. That's why I made this whole presentation. So here are the misconceptions about peer review. Don't worry if you are not a good writer. Um, I am not, so here's one of the misconceptions. I am not a good writer. You do not have to be a good writer to do peer review. After all, we critique movies without being film producers. So. Peer review just means that you give actionable suggestions on how others uh, do their work. Don't worry if your English grammar stinks. I am doing the English teacher's job. Do you think you're doing the English teacher's job by doing a peer review, uh, Candace? No, definitely not. not. Because you're not doing the grading. You're not the one giving the person an A, B, C, or D. That's the called evaluation feedback. That's the teacher's job, actually. I am afraid of, a, this is the biggest one. I am afraid of offending my classmates. And, or I'm afraid of being laughed at by whatever I write, okay? I get students who email me these things. That's, that's how I know this. And I would say, no, I've been teaching writing for many years, and everyone is just nervous, but nobody laughs at other people's suggestions. Also, people are nervous about showing their work in public because they think, oh, my writing is terrible. I don't want everybody else to see all my mistakes. That's another one. And I would say everyone in, in a writing class usually all make the same mistakes. Everybody is in the same boat. How many times do I have to write, place your thesis statement as the last sentence of the first paragraph? Each paragraph needs to have five to seven sentences. Why do I have to say that? 35 times out of 50 students is because just about everybody makes the same. So you're, so when you show your rough draft, you're just showing the same mistakes everybody else makes. So you shouldn't, and you shouldn't be afraid of offending people because you're all making the same mistakes to each other. So um, that sort of, so no need to be nervous. My classmates will laugh at my peer review. No, because everyone's peer review looks the same. And no one has ever laughed at it. Everyone's just been nervous. So what are the misconceptions of peer review? Um, Lisa, what are the misconceptions of peer review? Um, that the misconceptions thinking that you're the one that's grading that other person's paper. I mean, they, they think that you're, if you put down what you think is wrong, then, you know, they've got it wrong and that it's, it's over. And uh, Sarah, do you have to be good at grammar to do a peer review? No. And what if you don't know enough grammar to, to tell people you don't have good parallel structure? Does that stop you from giving a peer review of someone's paper? Absolutely not. You can also ask uh, others. I've been trying to do my, peer, uh, my, my parallel structure, like Pro Pro Professor H said, because Professor H said in my week two uh, uh, assignment, I need more peer review, uh, more parallel structure. I don't even know what that is. I looked it up on the internet. I still don't know what it is. 
then you can ask others. Of course, I've had that in previous peer reviews, and I would get things, other people would go, oh, I don't know what a peer review e is either. Do you? No, I don't know. You get a whole string of comments where no one knows what it is. And then at that point, I would jump in and say, here's a video on peer review that I made just for your class because a whole bunch of you don't know what it is. So that's, if, you, if there are any videos you want me to make about any grammar points, I can do that if nobody knows what something is, even if they read it on the net. And so parallel structure is very crucial for your thesis statement. That just means that all your sentences are of the same structure. How do I give feedback? So you give feedback by giving actionable suggestions. In other words, you don't say to someone, your paper sucks, and then just leave it at that. If I were to do that to you, let's say I, you hand in a paper, and I say to you, uh, Anil, your paper sucks, and then I just walk away. Is that going to help you improve your paper? How are you going to know what sucks? How are you going to know what to improve? And so therefore, when you give uh, feedback, you want to tell the student, you need to shorten your paragraphs. You need to place your thesis statement in, a, in another place, not over there. So you need to give them actionable suggestions for which they can um, that also goes for when you do a job performance. You don't tell the fellow worker, you suck. You have to say, in order to improve your work performance, you need to stop using so much slang. Stop saying, you know, you know, you know, you know, at the end of every sentence. You annoy everybody when you do that. That's how you give an actionable in the workplace. So remember, your feedback are just suggestions. So you don't get offended by saying, oh my god, everyone's critiquing me. It's an insult. Okay, I've gotten that before too. That's one of the misconceptions. They're just suggestions. And then you give constructive criticism. What is constructive criticism? Constructive criticism is a helpful way of giving feedback that provides specific, actionable suggestions. Rather than providing general advice, constructive criticism gives specific recommendations on how to make positive improvements. Constructive criticism is clear, to the point, and easy to put into action. Here are some constructive criticism tips. You start out by saying something, you use the feedback sandwich. In other words, say something positive, then areas of improvement, then say something positive. That's known as the sandwich method. Feedback sandwich method. How, much, how many of you have heard of that before? So how many of you were taught yeah, to, to do this at work, if you've ever had to be somebody's boss or somebody's supervisor, and then your supervisor would say, use the sandwich method, it works. And then they walk away because they assume you know what that is. You're supposed to learn that in college, what is a sandwich method. Uh, your boss is not supposed to have to delineate to you something like that. So, so you, you, you could do that, you could give the appreciation feedback, then you write about, you need to improve this, this, and this. And then you give another positive, something positive about. But overall, because I do that all the time, I overall, great job, good job, so-so job. Although I haven't had to say so-so job in a long time. As the last, so be specific, stick to actionable, actionable points, and recommend, don't assume. You don't have to be an expert. OK, we did this. Simply give actionable uh, suggestions. You can comment on the topic, um, and in other words, if somebody writes about abortion, you can comment on, you know, I think that abortion should be also blah, 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 or President so-and-so really is good, such a good blah, 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 that, that then you can say, oh, and by the way, you need to improve, then you can segue into what they need to improve, and then you can go back to uh, commenting on the topic. So you can mix it up um, if you want to. Uh, and if you can't think of any, so you can, you can start out commenting on their topic. And so here, here's what the, you would be checking on. Are all of his or her paragraphs five to seven sentences long? Does he or she have three parts to an essay? In other words, an introduction, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. Some students handed me a three-sentence um, uh, essay and didn't read the instructions carefully, and you need five. So the, the peer review post came out, oh, Denisha, you only wrote three paragraphs. This assignment requires five paragraphs. And then for the second essay, uh, people are writing, uh, Denisha, where's your APA sources? 
Um, the, this assignment requires an, a, one APA source. That's for your second essay. So that's for weeks uh, 7, 9, and 11. So uh, does he have one central idea backed up by supporting paragraphs? You would say, Denisha, I have no idea what your essay is about, and I can't even find your thesis statement. And you're supporting paragraphs talking about something totally different than your main idea. Um, or uh, do you, does his thesis have three reasons? Oh, Denisha, you're missing your three reasons in your thesis statement. Um, do the body paragraphs relate back to the thesis? You would say, well, paragraph three doesn't exactly relate back to your topic because you're talking about something else, okay? And then, and then you could write, and then you have to restate your thesis as the first sentence of the last paragraph. So you would say, Denisha, you forgot to, to restate your thesis statement as the first sentence of the last paragraph. Uh, that sort of thing. So this is a typical rubric of what you can comment on when you comment on essay structure. More comments on essay structure. Does the introduction contain a hook, a bridge, and a thesis statement? Because your introduction uh, has three parts. A hook, which grabs the reader's attention. A bridge, those are the five sentences, that's the five sentences in which you introduce your thesis statement. And then your thesis statement is the last sentence of the introduction. So you would say, Denisha, you're missing a hook, or you're missing your bridge. You're missing a thesis statement in your intro. Um, do the topic sentences relate back to the, to the thesis? Uh, do the subpoints in the, in the paragraph, body paragraphs, relate back to the topic sentences? So you would say, well, you wrote about a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but then in your body paragraph, you wrote about something else altogether. So do, do, does, do they have essay coherence? This is all about essay coherence. And so more, more, more um, peer review questions. You would, you would ask that person, well, Denisha, what exactly is your essay about? Your essay makes no sense. Um, you, you're making a lot of APA errors, like you forgot to put in, you have to have the author, the date, and the page number for your direct quote. And for your paraphrase quote, you only need an author and, and the date. You don't need to put quotation marks in your paraphrase quote. I can't, and then that sort of thing. So that's APA errors. Or you can write, you don't even have any APA citations. You're going to lose points. So that's another one. So does the, or your paper is really dull. Can you do something to liven it up? Give it some more dialogue. Give it more action. Um, give it some climax uh, if, if you're writing a narrative with a climax. Well, you put the climax in the wrong paragraph. The climax is supposed to go in the fourth paragraph, not the first paragraph. Those are the kind of peer review comments you can make. And then after you make your comment, and then someone goes, I don't understand. What did you mean by climax? Then you can explain climax is the highest, most exciting point in a narrative. That sort of thing. And so are there any grammar or punctuation mistakes? You need to put a comma. Professor H says you need to put a, say, put a comma after, if a dependent clause starts a sentence. You don't need that comma if the dependent clause is at the end of a sentence. That sort of thing. So if you're really good at grammar, not many students are good enough at grammar to do that. Although I've had a few students repeat the week, what they learned in the quiz. Oh, I just learned in the week three quiz, you're supposed to do this and this and this. And I just learned in the week five quiz. So usually by, as we start progressing in the class, students start to remember some of their week, week quiz uh, rules. Uh, and then they apply it to the peer review. You could do that too. You would say, Denisha, you can't just say RN and LN. You have to, you have to uh, say the abbreviation the first time you mention it in a paper. That's also one of the quiz rules. I, think, I forget which quiz that, that, that I, uh, I teach that with. And so you, can, so you can repeat some of the quiz rules into, if somebody makes a mistake. That's, how, that's one way in which you could apply what you learn. Instead of just memorizing something for a quiz, and after the quiz you forget about it. But the trick is to remember and retain those rules so that you can, learn, you can use it outside of the class. That's the trick. Okay? And then, of course, you complement other students' work. You give them encouragement. And then you be kind and courteous. You don't say, hey, there, you suck, or something like that. Have you ever done that to someone's... Uh, but when you give constructive criticism to other people, hey, there, you suck? No. 
So you have to be kind and courteous. I actually have to tell that to people because some students really actually need to be t taught uh, how to have a professional tone in class. This usually happens with younger students who have never worked. So I've actually had 17-year-olds or 18-year-olds who've never worked in the workplace. Those are the students that need um, uh, to be told what kind of tone to use. And so, do you understand how to do a peer review? Yeah, you're probably like, wow, this, this whole presentation is, and how to receive feedback. So when we receive feedback, let's say that you are on a, you're at your job, your boss comes over and gives you a review. And so when you, your boss gives you a review, do you welcome the job review or do you dread the, the, the job review? Uh, Sarah, do you, do you welcome the job review or do you dread your job review? Uh, I dread it usually. Yeah, okay. What about you, Candice? Do you dread your job review or do you welcome it? I welcome it because I like constructive criticism. Okay, what about you, Tara? Do you welcome or dread your job review? I welcome it. It's just a good way to grow. I like that attitude. What about? Okay, here I, I got. Here I go again, Jamila. So, uh, what what do you do? Do you do you welcome or do you dread uh, your uh, job review? I think I dread it. Most most people say. I used to dread my job review. I used to I used to hate having to see what I did wrong because I used to think of it as an attack or oh my god they're attacking me and then I would become very defensive and then I would then I would say to my boss you need to say something positive to me as if I was entitled as if I was entitled that the boss has to say something positive each time. Do you think that the boss has to say something positive about your work every time? Yes or no? Do you feel you should be entitled to positive, even if you're doing so-so work? Do you, do you think I you're entitled? Know, yes, but I, now I'm thinking no. <laughs> yeah, your boss doesn't doesn't have to say any anything positive if they don't feel like it. That's what you. That's what I had to learn. I thought I was entitled to always, no matter how bad my work was because of the sandwich method. I was taught at UCLA, you're supposed to give some, somebody something positive, then negative, then positive. Any other kind of feedback is not right and, or, or inadequate. And I thought, so therefore, I thought I was, no, I learned that the bosses can say whatever they want. And then I learned I've got to welcome that sort of job performance. I need to welcome feedback, which is something I'm not good at, by the way. And I had to learn that. That's, that was something that I had to learn the hard way, is you've got to be positive and open to feedback and then, so that you can grow. So these days, and, and then when you do that, then, then, then your job becomes a lot more fun. And so these days, I reach out and I say to my boss or to the students, how can I improve? And then I welcome any kind of feedback, even negative, because instead of seeing it as an attack on my personality, I see it as a way I can improve as a way to grow. And once I changed my mindset on how to receive feedback, then the workplace became a less threatening place and a more welcoming place where I can grow. But that took a lot of time and it took a lot of energy out of me. And I used to think I was just like a student who thinks that she's entitled to an A just because she, had, she sits and attends class. She thinks no matter what she hands in, she's entitled to that A for whatever the reason. And a lot of teachers complain that there are a lot of students who just think they deserve an A because they show up to class. When actually it's a combination of how you do your work, how well, you've got to put yourself in the teacher's shoes. Would you give an A to everybody that you uh, teach? Uh, Tara, would you give an A to everybody that you teach, regardless no. of how, how, and then how would they learn? How would they improve if everybody gets an A uh, automatically? Although in some schools, uh, uh, but that's a different topic. So when we receive uh, feedback, we should receive it as something positive. We should be a good sport. So when we receive the feedback, let's say we do a peer review and a gazillion people see something wrong with your paper. And it's very easy to feel, and I've had students feel very insulted. I've even had students be insulted when I graded their papers and put all kinds of errors, and I corrected their errors. And one student said, how dare you correct my paper? I'm a published writer. 
And then the other students are like, well, then how come you flunked your writing test and you're in the same class we are? Because in my other school, if you flunk the writing test, you have to take my freshman composition class. Um, and so everybody knows that you flunked your test. That's why you're in that class. So that's what all the other students were like, yeah, right, you must be so good at writing that, that you so of course the teacher has to, you know, that kind of stuff. So are you um, insulted when I correct your paper, uh, Jamila? No, ma'am. Sarah, are you insulted when I correct your paper? No, because I'm not really good at writing, so it kind of helps me out. <laughs> That's good to be so honest. What about you, Candace? Are you insulted when I correct your paper? No, I'm not. And you, uh, Anil, are you uh, insulted when I correct your paper? Oh, I thought that uh, on the last one it was really good feedback because I love to babble. So <laughs> trying to, you know, reduce the information to just the content alone was quite good. Yeah, it's all, it's, it, it, most people um, like to, that's, that's the thing about essay structure is that it keeps it to a minimum. And then after you learn how different kinds of essay structure, then you can mix and match the different kinds of essay structure and then you can babble and that's how you develop your own style. So right now you still have to learn what those uh, essays to, there's actually eight different kinds of essay structures besides a five paragraph essay structure. I'm just going to go over two and then I'm going to mention the other six. So you're, you're going to have to, and you can also watch my writing videos. So be a good sport, um, receive feedback with a spirit of fun, stay positive, Instead of dreading the job performance, you welcome it. And uh, basically, that's it. Do not be offended. So do you think you'll be offended by the peer review, Jamila? Oh, I'm getting easier. Yes, no? Do you think you'll be offended, uh, Anil, by the uh, peer review? No, I, I don't think uh, there's any offense in that because uh... Usually I like to see how people are thinking about what I'm doing, so I'm pretty open to it. Okay, and so here you have, so have fun working together. Don't be afraid to say whatever you think if something is something wrong with someone's um, paper. And then when you get all the critiques, then don't be offended. That's basically what this part of the uh, feedback is. How you give feedback is you give actionable suggestions, and how you receive feedback, you should see it as an area of growth. So that's, that's basically, oh, and it, all of this came from this book, in case you're wondering. I, 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 uh, can you see that? Can you see it? Thanks for the feedback. I actually re got it off of this book. I know, it's, it's hard to see it because sometimes the camera gets it. But anyway, it's by somebody named Douglas Stone and Sheila Heen. Thanks for the feedback. And they also wrote something called Difficult Conversations. It's a New York Times bestseller. The science and art of receiving feedback well. Even if it is off base, unfair, poorly delivered, and frankly, you're not in the mood. Uh, something like that. So that's a pretty good book. And so I learned, I got a lot of this, um, this PowerPoint from, this, from that book, such as the three kinds of feedback, evaluation, appreciation, mentoring, and coaching, all came from that book. So if you want to read that book, and if someday you, you're going to be a supervisor, someone's boss, you also need to read that book. It's very good. All right, so let me get go, go on. And, and nobody is trying to attack you. Nobody is going to laugh at you. We are all in this together. Don't you like this picture? Everybody is. That's what we miss being online is, is that face-to-face. -face. I do miss that, that component of uh, peer review. But that's basically what it is. It's kind of like a study group. Um, so think of it as a study group and take it as a way to improve your grade. Do you feel better about doing a peer review and about receiving feedback? I believe we all said yes, right? Yes? Okay. And so uh, here are some model peer review templates of what other students have written me in the past. And so here I have an example of ineffective feedback. That was interesting. Your piece was very informative. This paper sucks and it was boring. Effective feedback. Oh, the essay introduced a challenge of your birth defect and how you had to cope with it. Then in the next part, you wrote about how it was really great. Effective feedback. First, you talk about how you like nursing because you get to interact with students. Then you talk about how you like nursing because you have a steady job. 
Third, you say that nursing is a job in high demand. Therefore, Denisha, you have three good reasons that will become the body of your essay. Now, I've said this to about 40 or 50 times for the week two rough draft, okay? So I said to just about everybody, great, uh, great thesis uh, with three reasons which will become your body paragraphs. Did I say that to just about everybody? If you had an effective thesis statement, then you should have gotten that feedback. If you didn't, then that means you need to rewrite it for, um, for, a, for a better grade. Okay, so you really need to fix that opening. What were you thinking? Do we write like that so with sarcasm? What are you thinking? Are you kidding me? You wrote something like that? So no sarcasm, no sarcasm needed. Effective uh, feedback would be, uh, Denisha, could you rewrite the first sentence so that it grabs the reader's attention? Also, I'm somewhat confused by your thesis statement. Can you rephrase it? That sounds much better than, what are you kidding me? That sort of thing. John, here's another one. Here's another good uh, uh, response. John, you have a great topic. I agree that guns are unnecessary. You do not have three uh, reasons in your thesis, and you need to place your thesis as the last sentence of the first paragraph. But I love the strength of your essays. You're so descriptive and, and graphic about gun control. Because he actually, in this particular person's essay, he got very graphic about how the body looked when he got riddled with bullets. So he was very graphic. So that was, that was also, I didn't include that in, the, in this particular, but that's what he wrote about. Oh, he liked about the blood and all that kind of stuff. And that got the point across that, yes, we need gun control. So that particular student happened to agree uh, with the topic for that reason. Jackie, you write so much better than I do. English is not my native language, so I don't know how much I can help you. You have much sentence, better sentence structure than I do, and you use a lot of transitions. I need help in my transitions. Oh my goodness, so confusing. That's, that was the rest, I, I shortened it, but that was the rest of that original quote of that person. Jack, you are missing your in-text citations. Professor H says that when you cite medical facts, you have to cite the source to avoid plagiarism. You are missing quotation marks around your direct quotes. Your paraphrase quote does not need page numbers. However, you have a great thesis statement, and you follow the thesis formula of topic, formula, and reason, and your body paragraphs support your thesis. I think you have great essay coherence. This is someone who tried out the sandwich method. Lamika, you need to double space your paper. Your font is bigger in one paragraph and smaller in another paragraph. All your font has to be the same size. Like you, I too am weak in APA. I found APA.org to be a great source to help me with my paper. Also, I went to YouTube and I learned how to APA from YouTube. Okay, somebody said that. So your feedback matters. Reread. You need to rewrite your thesis. Your paragraph is too long or too short. It has to be five to seven sentences. You need to cut it down or make it more. Um, you need three, uh, Erica, you need three reasons for your essay. And here I have another one. I am not a good writer. My English teacher said that my papers are terrible. So I don't know how to help you. And this is from an, uh, a Native American, I mean, a native speaker of English, not, the other one was ESL. This one is not. To me, your paper sounds good. Your paper makes sense to me, and I understand the main idea. But then, I, of course, it, it doesn't really mean much coming from me since my papers stink anyway, so anything that I say has to be taken with a grain of salt. That's what she wrote in her original. I agree that teachers should not have guns in the classroom. You have great reasons. Now, I notice you don't have any sources. Are, are we supposed to have sources in our assignment? I think so, yeah. Well, let me go look it up. That was what she actually wrote. And I think we need to have one. She was so doubtful. All of her suggestions had an, uh, a, a hint of doubt. In, in everything, but that's okay, you know, as long as you give, as long as you try to give a, this person was always so doubtful, even though she was right, and she, she didn't realize that she was always right. Anyway, Mona, you have a great paper, you don't have any sources, where did you get your information from? Professor H says we have to have all of our list of sources at the end of our paper. I have such a hard time finding sources. I use Google for my articles, but uh, Professor H says Google's not good enough, we've got to use Google Scholar, but I can't find anything on Google Scholar. Anyway, you just got to email her. She'll help you. She's great, or something like that. And here you have Maria, your reference citation is missing parts, or Chinese, 
You, your body paragraphs don't relate to your thesis. I can't tell what you're talking about. You have no thesis statement. What is your, what is your paper about? You need to use a thesis statement formula topic or so it gets to be it's so as you can see from these model um, what you call it everybody makes the same mistakes that's why all of the um, post the um, comments start to sound similar because uh, as you go through everybody goes through each other's paper most people make the same mistakes usually about the thesis statement body paragraphs you are using too many statistics in in a row Christina you're only supposed to use one statistic per paragraph uh, Professor H says you're supposed to use pie structure. You, you need to go watch uh, Professor H's pie structure video. I also was writing too many stati statistics in a row. Pie structure is when you use P, main point from the thesis, I. I is that one in-text citation. E, explanation of that in-text citation in five sentences. That's your entire body paragraph. She's going to mark you down if you have a thousand statistics in one uh, paragraph, because that's what happened to me, which is what, what, um, what, what that student actually said. See, these are just, I condensed it. People actually wrote a lot more than this, and I condensed it into, um, I'm not very good at grading papers. Every time I look at someone's paper, I see no mistakes. I know there are mistakes, but I, I just, I'm just not good enough for it. But I think you have a great thesis. And I agree, everyone should get that. Oh, this particular topic was very controversial. You had some students saying, I uh, really agree, everyone should get vaccinated. Then you had some students who said, no, that's my choice. So within that class, you had two factions. That was very interesting how that worked out. You don't have to agree with the other student's uh, paper. You can actually say, well, you know, Donna, I disagree with your, I respectfully disagree with your topic. I think my choice to have uh, vaccinated, to get vaccinated. So you can stick in your, your two cents. If you disagree, then that other person could put you in as a counter-argument paragraph in, in, the, in the introduction saying, some people think they should not get vaccinated because uh, it's their choice. Then you write, however, people should get vaccinated. So in other words, if someone disagrees, you can stick it into your paper as a counter-argument in which you have to have rebuttal. So if you want to make your argument stronger, you can put a counter argument. This is for your week nine. In case you're wondering where this is coming from, this is from the week nine uh, forum. So week nine has a lot of, you can, uh, is persuasive when you learn persuasive essay. Not so much narrative essay. People don't usually disagree with other people's stories. But if, when we got to the persuasive uh, essay in week nine, that's where people started disagreeing with each other's points of view. And so, yeah, you can write other people's point, uh, points of view into your persuasive, oh, that's another topic, sorry. So anyway, so you can comment on other people's papers and you can um, ask for help. If you're stuck on a source, if you're stuck on, uh, you, can, you can ask people for help and that's it. So did these model peer reviews help you think about exactly what you're going to write for your peer review? Candace? Or did you guys all fall asleep? By, the, by this time, everybody's uh, gone, 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 into, gone, into, gone to sleep. And then we're going to talk about your papers. Okay, we're going to be more. Um, and then here I have, and then what you're going to do for your peer review uh, uh, for the peer review week, post early so that everybody has a chance before Wednesday, so everybody has a chance to read your paper. And then post, you have until Sunday to post to other people's, uh, to give feedback to other people's paper. And then wait until you get a lot of feedback and then go back to the forum to include those, the feedback critiques, and especially what, if I critique your paper and I point out all your mistakes also. So you need to go back to the forum. After you do your, your two posts, you still have to go back to check to see what everybody else posted so that you can include it into your rough draft um, and then uh, into your final draft, sorry. So then you post to two other students. So you have until Sunday to post to two other students and then you include the feedback corrections for your final draft. So this is all for week five, uh, week five to week six. Week six is your final draft. Week five is gonna be your peer review forum. And then you're gonna have another one for, for the next essay, week seven, week 10, 
uh, week seven, nine, and eleven every other week. And so, what steps do you do we do we need to take for our peer review forum week? Do we post late or early? Jamila, do we post late or early? Candice, do we post late or you early? Post post early so that people have time to do their peer review. Okay. So do you, do you guys have an idea of, uh, so here you have peer review in the real world. I'm going to go through this very fast. So peer review is when uh, I, I write a paper for a professional journal and I've actually done that. And then other people will peer review my paper to see if it's good enough for their journal. If my paper is not good enough for their journal, I get rejected. So that's professional peer review. And then if you get, if you get published in a, in a journal, that means that you have been peer reviewed by other teachers and deemed worthy of somebody's um, peer review. And so here's, some, here's a big mochi that I did for fun. Um, that I, I, it means that different teachers look over each other's paper and then they peer review. So scholarly peer review is when other experts look over your paper and deem your paper worthy, okay, of, of publishing. Is this, that's what this person is. All those eyes represent uh, expert, other experts. And so you have scholarly peer review, a government peer review. In other words, different government agencies all peer review each other, okay, so that the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe through UNECE Environmental Performance Review uses peer review, in other words, climate change. Um, when they had the Paris um, Agreement, the different countries compare each other saying, oh look, China is having so much pollution, but look, America has just withdrawn. They're such hypocrites because they, they say that climate change is important, yet they withdraw from the agreement. So that's policy peer review. And then medical peer review, that's what you guys would be doing is if you wrote an article for a nursing journal, then other nurses will read your article and see, and then they will deem your article good enough or not good enough for the journal. So this is an example of a medical journal that you would write for as a nurse. So this is an actual nursing journal, nurses writing for nurses. Um, and then this is more about, uh, and nurses help each other on the job. And this is how an article goes through peer review until it finally gets published. Uh huh. And that's, and in engineering, my boyfriend says they have something called um, anonymous peer review where different people peer review each other and then you anonymously write in a John is a really good uh, and then John would get the peer review and not know who it, got, who it came from. That's similar to your end of class survey where I get all of these comments from students. I don't know which student gave it to me and that way uh, you can write honestly about uh, she's a good teacher or she's a bad teacher, uh, that, sort of, that sort of thing. And uh, here, it, here are some more, and you have job performance, which we went over already. Uh, bad review, you suck. That's not, a good, that's not good to say. You have to give actionable, like I said. What do you have to, do you say you suck? What kind of actionable suggestions would you give to a colleague to improve their work performance? Uh, Sarah. Can you say that one more time? I'm sorry. What kind of... If you were the boss, what kind of, um, what would you say to help somebody improve their work besides you suck? Uh, the sandwich method. The sandwich method. Excellent. All right. So this is practically the last. This is a peer review of uh, when you peer review your um, some kind of consumer peer review. That's also how peer review is used in the real world is when, when you buy a product, you, you think it stinks and then you go to Yelp and complain about it. And so that's also peer review. So that's how peer review is done in the real world. I'm done with this, um, with this presentation. And so uh, next week, all right, so I'm going to stop sharing. Hold on, hold on, where did it go? Yeah. And so next week, I'm going to go over the week five quiz prep. Do, do you have any questions about the week three quiz prep? Everybody's good about, and what about your papers? Everybody good about your papers? Do you have any questions about your papers? Thesis statement, body paragraphs, topic sentences? Everyone's good? Yeah? All right, then 
if, if that's the case, then we can end it here. This is a f I try to do this as fast as I can because once everyone understands what's a peer review, this time I stuck to one topic, then I can go through it really fast. Normally I do a gazillion, a gazillion topics and it takes much longer, such as quiz review. So anybody have any other, uh, any other questions? You can also look at the yes. You need to. Uh, my, my, yeah, my question was with regards to uh, your feedback on the last uh, paper. Okay. Um, Don't mention your numerical grade. Okay, you can mention I, feedback. I, that not, you can't say, I got a B plus, or I got a D, or I got a... No, because this is public. So nobody, yeah. you're not allowed to do that. But you can talk about the feedback. Yeah, I, I don't even remember seeing my numerical <laughs> grade. <laughs> but, uh, no, with regards to the feedback, um, how, how do you go back and look it up on Canvas to review it again? To review the feedback? Oh, well, all you have to do is you just pretty much, um, from a student's point of view, what was your, I'll, I'll take a look at your paper and I'll email you your feedback and I'll give you a, a better explanation. Would that, would that work? You're muted. Yes, that would be great if you could do that, please. Okay, all right. Anybody else have any other questions? No questions. That's good. So uh, we can end it here for this week. If you have no questions about the week three quiz, did you have any? Did any of you have any trouble finding where the week three quiz prep was? No, no but I have I another didn't. question. Oh, yeah. I don't know who went first. Was it Candice or was it Anil? No, Candice goes first. Okay, Candice. Candice. Okay. Okay. Well, wait. Well, well, go ahead. Sorry, and... I didn't have a question. I was just saying I didn't have any problem finding it. Oh, okay. Okay. Did you find the quiz three week three quiz easy? Yeah, I just have not taken it yet. Ah. Okay. So all you have to do is just. I also sent out the week three quiz uh, video in the announcements as well. Uh, I can't send the PowerPoint for some reason. It doesn't go through announcements as well. So I usually send everything um, by email. I think I sent the week three quiz PowerPoint and the lecture notes through all your email. So you should all look at your email for that, for the lecture notes. Uh, Anil, what was your last question or next question? Yeah, earlier on you mentioned the pie structure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, could you go your, over that again? For your second essay, you're going to need to use at least one statistic, uh, one APA statistic for your paper. And so when you use pi structure, that means that you have P stands for main point from the thesis statement. Okay? That would be your topic sentence, like saying, I became a nurse because I like to interact with people. That's your topic sentence. Then you would uh, have your I for your in-text citation. 87% uh, of nurses think that nursing is a great career because whatever, okay? Then you have, that's I for in-text citation. Then you have to write the author's name, the date, and the page number for your in-text citation. Then you write E, explanation of that in-text citation in five sentences. That's pi structure. And in that way, you fill out your, your body paragraph using only one statistic. Okay, I have students giving me, so, and mainly because readers only can remember one statistic at a time, or two statistics, because the human brain can only manage two or three things, tops. And if you give too many, then the human brain will just turn off, not remember. And we, once you walk away from it, you only remember, that's why you only remember the first two people who win a, a, the, top, the top runners. You just remember the first two. Um, Sarah, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Okay, so this is the part in which you guys can have your one-on-one -on -one, uh, Zoom session after the lecture, or you can leave when you're done with the uh, lecture. So it's up to you to stay or come as, as, as long as you want. That's why a lot of people left already. Okay, so she left because she has no questions. This is when you have your one-on-one. -on -one. Do you have any quest any other questions, Anil? You are still. I I am. St I'm. I'm thinking because I know I wrote it down. Um, yes, with regards to sources. Okay. Yes. Mentioned Google Scholar. 
when you were talking yes. about that? Yeah, and so in, in, next, in my next lecture, I'm going to talk about what are some good places for you to find good sources. And so you can either go to the library or you can go to Google Scholar. Now, for the topics in this class, such as, uh, oh, so you can use Google Scholar. All of the, the topics in Google Scholar are credible sources. As opposed to Google, if you just use Google, you're going to get a mixture of ads and bad websites and so on, and everything shows up. So that's why Google Scholar, you should use that for your research paper. But if you have a topic that's really easy, then it's okay to use Google as long as you use uh, that. This is going to be for my next lecture in which I'm going to teach you how to find credible sources. So that's going to be the week 10 uh, lecture. And so that's going to be all about uh, how we find credible sources using CRAP, C-R-A-P, or using, it, it's, it's a, it's a, um, it's an, 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 an acronym. An acronym, okay. yes. There are other acronyms as well. But uh, I'll teach you that in the next lecture, so it's not to overload people. Uh, this lecture is just something very easy, such as what is peer review. Now, before I gave this kind of lecture of what is peer review, everybody got so confused over what that was. So I decided to add that in. I don't think it's. I think it's mentioned in your textbook, but briefly, um, and but not in not in length. Not not like this. Okay. Not the way I did it with. Uh, so any other questions? Um, yeah, I don't have my other computer, so I can't really see my, the timetable on that. But um, pre-writing was this week, so next week we're doing the actual rough yeah. draft, week right? Four, yes, next week we, you're going to just, the only thing for week four is just the week four rough draft. Then you're in the second part of the writing process, which is transforming your outline into the five paragraph essay format. Then in week five and six, that's the third stage of the writing process where you're rewriting based on all the critiques that everybody has given you. That's it for so, that's the writing process. Yeah, so with regards to the rough draft, um, it still has to be in the proper formation, right? Like the first paragraph has the introduction and the thesis statement, then you have yes. three paragraphs yes. and yes. your conclusion. Correct, correct. And then you gotta remember to repeat your thesis uh, in you, as the first sentence in your last paragraph, so that it's like a triangle from specific into general. And then the other one, I remember I did this in what, week one or the week two, I forget. And the other one is the funnel in which you, you begin general and then you end uh, specific. Always the specific is the thesis statement in both cases. Any, okay. other, any other questions? So the thesis statement must be, because I, I am, I am this, this thesis statement is confusing me a great deal. Okay, a thesis with, statement, there are so many ways. Okay, yeah. there really is so many ways to, to, to do a thesis statement. There are actually eight different kinds of thesis statements because there are eight different kinds of essays. Okay, and I'm going to be going over that. I think that's in your week three interactive lecture in your Canvas. Your okay. week three interactive lecture goes over different kinds of essays and each kind of essay has its own kind of thesis statement. Like a process essay would be how to, and how to get rich, how to lose weight. So you would say, in order to lose weight, you need to step one, step two, step three. That's a process essay thesis statement. Then if you have a cause and effect essay, the causes of World War II was cause one, cause two, cause three. The, in a different essay, different the uh, same cause and effect, that the effects of World War II was effect one, effect two, effect three. That's two different papers, by the way. Mm -hmm. and, and the persuasive essay, which is the most common one, which is topic, um, opinion, and reason, TOR. So he was a nursing topic, is a great career, opinion, reasons, because, one, two, and three. That actually is the most, that's the one I teach the most often because that's the most common, but you actually have eight other kinds. I only mentioned two, I think, out, out of the eight. And so if you, read, if you read that one, and also I think I have it in my, did I give you the essay flow charts? No, probably not. I'll, probably, I'll email you the essay flow charts. I don't, think, I don't think I did that for this class. Yeah. Okay. So all the essay flow charts will have the eight different kinds of thesis statements. It'll, it's all the five paragraph essay structure. And then there's others. But I, I decided to keep those for away for now. 
<laughs> you see, my, my question was with regards to to my essay or the rough draft that I did. So the topic was, um, you know, did you what like uh, what was that? Uh, the impact of um, a medical thing happening. I think it's something like that, right? Okay, and uh, then so my is my thesis statement based upon what impact I had from it, or what result did I? Okay, uh, yeah. you need, in your case, there are two ways to write a paper. Mm -hmm. There's number one. First, you write your thesis statement, then you write your body paragraphs. That's one number one. Another way to write it, which is probably the one you, you need, is write your paper out first. Okay, write the whole thing out first, and then summarize the three main points into one sentence. That will be you're gonna do it the opposite of the way everybody else does it. You're gonna write everything out first, all three body paragraphs. And you're gonna read your three body paragraphs, and then you're gonna write your your uh, what the summarize those three body paragraphs into one sentence. So let's say I write a uh, uh, three three ways in which I got rich. Although I'm not rich, but uh, first I know my finances, have a good advisor, and I save money. All right. Let's say that's my three. Those are my those were my three body paragraphs. It just came off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Then I would summarize it by saying three ways to get rich is know your finances because that's basically what I talked about in essay uh, paragraph two. Oh, I got myself a good advisor. And then number three, I saved money. And then I put that in one. And then I put that sentence as the last sentence of the first paragraph. So you could do it that way. If you if you're confused about what that how to do the thesis statement, then you can go backwards because some students uh, actually do better when they write it out first and then they summarize it. What were the three main points? And you summarize your three main points in your thesis statement. Okay, I think that might work out better for me. Well, I'm gonna do the rough draft and also, then... Also for the narrative essay, there's also another approach, is that if you're writing a story, right, like I did with the bill, this is a different approach, but it still works, is that um, in his introduction, first he wrote about, I was an immature young teenager. Then I joined the military and I walked into this bar and met my wife. Then I threw up on her. That pretty much sums up his three, his three or four, whatever it was for his paragraph, his body paragraphs, and that became his entire introduction. You can also do it that way as well. I forget the name of that. There is a, a specific name for that kind of thesis statement and that, that escapes me. But that's another way. That's, that's very good for story writing and for narratives. So it depends on what kind of narrative. If you wrote a multi-story narrative essay, then you could just write the three main points, like I just told you. But if you wrote the one story in which you just told one story of how you threw up on your wife, well, then that would be, you would just uh, summarize the events, all of the events in, 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 in the story, and then you write those events. It's, it's similar, very, very similar mm -hmm. to the multi-story one, except the multi-story one, you do it all in one sentence. That's the difference. But the okay. other one, you could you could elongate it into one introduction. That works also. That that's what that's a different way of doing it. And I was uh, reading about it, and I forgot the name off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. I no, I, I, I doing it. Yeah, I think I have a good idea as to how I want to do it. But obviously, feedback from you is more important. So, well. <laughs> you'll, you'll do fine. You'll do fine. I find that to students, the more the more students ask questions, the better that the, they tend to be the A students. Okay, it's the students who just uh, hand in something very quickly, not ask any questions, not even bother with including their errors from the feedback. Those are the students who don't do as well because they're they're just in a hurry, coming and going inside because they're interested in just getting the diploma. They're not. They, they tell themselves, "I'm not going to be a writer. I'm not going to use this when I grow up." So I'm just going to, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. you know, and then someday they find themselves writing for a medical journal and thinking, "Oh, why didn't I pay more attention in writing class?" Mm -hmm. You see, you never know what's what's come what comes up the road. You never know. You might have to use this skill, and that's the kind of that's the attitude. Because in this in this pandemic market, you just don't know. Basically, everything is so uncertain. So you got to right. take advantage of everything you learn. Greg, no, I do a lot of writing myself. Um, not just, I mean, I've never done any publishing or anything, but in school, 
I, you know, I was in debates all the time and things of that sort. So. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's hard to do in an online. I mean, I can do it if if everyone had the same schedule and everyone could attend the zooms. Then we could be more like a traditional face-to-face -face class. But right. with, adults, with adult students with different schedules and different times, and everyone is watching the video uh, at yeah. different times, it's very difficult to then simulate a face-to-face -face kind of a, a uh, environment of debate. The closest we could do it would be in a forum where people would say their point of view within the forum, so that, that, that then it fits. That's the closest you could do it online. My other school, I taught at a military school, so I had students from all over the world, military bases. American military bases from around the world. So three o'clock Korea time would be three a.m. my time. So I had a, I had a friend of mine who let you choose to leave her phone on all the time. And this one Korean student, student American student in Korea, would call at four a.m. in the morning. She didn't mind waking up and helping, but the husband, he didn't want to have phone calls at four in the morning because he's yeah. in deep sleep. He has to wake up at five or six or whatever so he could be fresh. He doesn't want to go to work looking with the with the rings under under the, <laughs> his, you know, it doesn't look very it's not a good look. Right. But he right. didn't like it. So she had to I don't remember what she I don't remember what she did. Mm -hmm. So um so the online environment was very good for that kind of, you know, um, forum. So that because the, the student would say Oh, I forgot that you guys are 4 a.m. because 4 p.m. it was time for her to get off work in Korea. Then she thinks about work. She'll pick up the phone and naturally call her teacher without thinking that her teacher is asleep at 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, she, right. she always forgot, even though the teacher would remind. Anyway, that, that, <laughs> that's another story. But um, any other yeah. questions? No, I think I'm good for now. If I do come up with anything, I'll email you. Okay. So. All right. Do you okay. do you prefer the the you prefer the Fortis email or your Gmail? Oh, we have to do it through Fortis email so that everybody can be up to date. That way, if you have any problems and you need to consult Mike yeah. or you need to consult Lisa, then everybody can be on the same page by reading okay. all the different emails. So it's it's easier that way for records. So, yeah, so it's the Y H O, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So all right, uh, perfect. So I'll see you next week. Yeah, same absolutely. Same bat time and same bat place. That's exactly. from Batman. That's, that's from Batman, in case you're wondering. Yes, uh, I, I have. I'm, I'm wearing a, a Black Panther shirt, so I'm into all of that. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Okay. So same bat place and same bat same channel. Bat time. Okay. Bye. <laughs> right. right. Okay. We'll see you then. Thank you. You're.